this next young lady hitting the stage is actually from Boston and can be seen regularly on the show laughing liberally. Please give it up for Miss Mandy Dunnevin. Damn, he's tall. Hi, you guys. I am from Massachusetts, where you can get gay married if you want, which I think is pretty cool because, like, it, my thing is, it might as well be legal everywhere. You know what I mean? Because, like, Paris Hilton was just about to marry a guy named Paris. That's the gayest thing I've ever heard. And that's legal, you know? I mean, if you both wear a Prada and you have a poofy dog you carry around in a purse, you're a gay couple. I don't see why that should be legal. Um, I think uh, I'm personally a little bit, like, afraid of getting married. You know, I don't know, I think like if my boyfriend came home one day with a diamond ring, I'd be like, honey, um, you don't have to give me expensive jewelry to prove that you love me. Just cash. <laughs> I'm serious, because if you said, baby, I love you, you're the one, do you want $5,000? I'd say, I do. Because <laughs> marriage scares me. But a flat screen TV doesn't scare me. Weird. And I have all these friends like now having babies and stuff. And I had to give a baby shower gift for my friend the other day. I had to go into Babies R Us. Have you guys seen this place? Oh my god, you could be like the biggest commitment phobe in the world. You walk into that place, five minutes later you've strapped on a restaurant. <laughs> Even the guys. It's really weird. It's a weird place. I don't know what it is. They just have these little booties with like duckies on them. Like ovarian crap. <laughs> I uh, I'm just I'm really not at the uh, you know baby making stage of life yet. I guess I'm barely out of the get drunk and come up with a stranger stage. Uh, it's taken me slowly, you know that. But uh, I I did I guess I'm sort of like a serial monogamous. I guess uh, I dated this one guy for a while, um, but it didn't work out because he was an eye doctor. Which made the sex really weird, because like the whole time he kept going, better love this, better love this. <laughs> and then I never noticed the difference. <laughs> I, I guess like growing up, I always uh, imagined that I would marry someone in my religion, but as I get older, I realize that's stupid, because I'm Quaker. <laughs> No one else in the world is. <laughs> My boyfriend is Greek Orthodox. I know it's upsetting. We uh, we met. Uh, my boyfriend's Greek Orthodox. We met at a support group for people with unpopular religions. <laughs> it was called Children of Lesser Gods. We met Tom Cat there. I, uh, I read something interesting the other day, I wanted to share it with you guys, I thought it was pretty funny, is that um, George Bush was interviewed by like, this German reporter or something, he was asked what his best moment while in office was, and he said catching a seven and a half pound fish at his lake in Crawford. <laughs> but in his defense, you guys, that probably was his best moment. <laughs> He's probably got it like mounted on the wall with like a little plaque underneath that says Mission Accomplished. <laughs> I would be like the first person to tell you what's gone wrong um, in Iraq, but I have to say, somebody pointed this out to me, and it's true, in that they had their first Democratic elections ever last year, and voter turnout was crazy. It was like something like 90% of people went out to vote. And they had suicide bombers and car bombs and like nothing would stop them from voting. You know what stops us from voting? Raining. <laughs> or like a good episode of Wife Swap. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get like, uh, I don't get like that extra 38% of people that are just like stalwart Bush supporters like eh, going down for the count, you know, I just don't get it. I, that mentality to me is like the people that go on Jerry Springer 
Uh, you know, like the women when the show is entitled My Boyfriend Slept With My Sister and My Mama? And they're sitting there crying and like holding their boyfriend's hand and Jerry Springer's like, why are you still with him? And she's like, because I don't know what else to do. <laughs> That's how like 40% of America feels. George Bush is their drug abusive boyfriend. They don't know what else to do. <laughs> I, uh, I do a lot of benefits with the comedy and I did one um, recently for Hurricane Katrina victims. And I still can't believe the way that all went down. You know, like, Mayor Nagin calls FEMA and no one gets back to him for five days. I've dated assholes that could respond to calls faster than that. <laughs> you know, it's got to be hard to find out that the government's just not that into you. <laughs> <laughs> and did anybody see the speech that George Bush gave when he went down uh, to New Orleans? Oh my god, it was so good. He goes down like, you know, it was like a week after Hurricane Katrina or something. Because he was on vacation, you know, for like two months. And he, you know how it is when you get back from vacation and you're like, I don't feel like working. <laughs> so that's how he was feeling. So he finally gets down, he finally gets down to New Orleans. And he wants to give a speech to show that, you know, the leaders are still in charge and you're, you're you know, we're in control and everything's going to be okay. But the thing is, I don't really think George Bush is a very good public speaker. Because <laughs> he gets down there and then he starts off the speech like, I used to come to New Orleans all the time from Houston, Texas to have fun. Sometimes a little too much fun. <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. Like half a million people have been rendered homeless. And he's like, is a coyote ugly 